And tonight I have the high privilege and distinct honor of my own as the first president to begin the State of the Union message with these words, Madam Speaker. I wasn't elected speaker because I was a woman. I had to prove that I would be the best for the job. When the opportunity came, I was ready. My motivation for even being in public life comes from my family, that public service is a noble calling. Her father was in Congress, and then he was the mayor of Baltimore from the time she was in first grade till the time she went off to college. So public service was the language they spoke in the house she grew up in. We never, ever thought she would run for public office. But she started volunteering at the California Democratic Party, and she became friends with Sala Burton, who was our local congresswoman. And then Sala got sick and summoned my mother to her deathbed and said, I want you to run for my seat. Without objection, the gentlewoman from California is recognized for one minute. The president has again decided to cast his vote against civil rights. Today, I am pleased to introduce the AIDS Health Care Financing Act of 1988. The infant mortality rate is an embarrassment. It's the tragedy. It's immoral. We must do something about it. One in five children in America lives in poverty. And so that has been my sort of North Star. What does this do for the children? No woman has ever risen so high. Biggest election night for the Democratic Party in years. Nancy Pelosi could become the first woman House Speaker. To the first woman speaker in our history, the gentle lady from California, Nancy Pelosi. I did feel a real responsibility to other women. As I stood on the shoulders of those who went before, I knew that others were standing on mine. For our daughters and our granddaughters, today we have broken the marble ceiling. For our daughters and our granddaughters now, the sky is the limit. Anything is possible for them. Nancy Pelosi worked very well with both Republican presidents and Democratic presidents. She's always looking for common ground. Everything that I accomplished during my presidency, in part, uh, was a result of Nancy's outstanding leadership. Many of us thought that we had a challenge to our generation. There was Social Security long before us, and now we were having Affordable Care Act, a pillar of health and economic security for America's working families. Nancy combines a, a set of qualities that you don't find in a lot of outstanding legislators, politicians, or leaders generally. Uh, she is tough. She knows her stuff. She has a moral compass and uh, knows what's important, but she also knows uh, what she can compromise in order to get stuff done. I met LBJ when I was a student, and he was courageous, and he'd go out there and be bold in terms of the War on Poverty and Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act. It was just a joy to behold, but I knew that it took courage, and I respect the courage of Lyndon Baines Johnson. I think if LBJ were here tonight, he would be proud of his soulmate because he was the master of the Senate. She's the master of the House. She loves the institution. She loves the legislative branch. That's her life. She never wanted to be any other place. You know, I think when the history is written about Congress, it's going to be pretty clear that there weren't many, if any, who were more effective in uh, leading the House of Representatives uh, and functioning as Speaker of, of the House than Nancy Pelosi. Uh, I was very proud to work alongside her. I, I consider it one of the great honors of my life. Our common cause is to find and forge a way forward for our country. Let us stand for the people to promote liberty and justice for all.